uh, and I hung my head and walked out of there as quickly as I could and did not tell a fucking soul that I just shit in the fucking water park. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Violent Professional Podcast. Uh, oh, that's the new intro song. That's the new intro song of the Violent Professional Podcast. It goes... It's only that way because I struggle sometimes trying to figure out how to start these fucking things. So um, I like to make noises, make funny sounds, because I like to be silly. I'm not... I don't like to... You know, keep keep uh, everything so serious like some of you motherfuckers out there. Um, but, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. I want to I want to address people that take their their lives a little bit too serious. Um, people that don't understand uh, people that are joking um, content that's not supposed to be serious, such as my own. Uh, oddly enough, people there's some people out there that uh, that believe I'm being serious in some of the things that I do. So I'm going to address some of that. So maybe this will help clear the confusion. But probably those people don't fucking know that this is a podcast uh, based around comedic stylings. They don't understand that I'm a silly goose half of the day. Almost all of the day, I like to be a silly goose. I like to be the goose that is silly most days. Um, and so whenever you see content, um, it's probably me being a fucking silly goose. So, I mean, I just explained the whole thing that I'm getting into later, but anyway, um, you know, I've, uh, I've been experimenting with different content, uh, as of late. And one of the things I wanted to put out is, uh, you know, is a series of videos about hiking. It's, uh, and just outdoor shit like skydiving and whatnot. Um, introduce some of the th- some of the things that I do um, in my life and um, and let you guys check it out. Make a documentary style uh, a video of, of sorts. Sorry, my hair is. For people watching, you gotta adjust my hair. It's getting to that place where it's really long. I can't can't fucking stand it. Um, so I gotta adjust sometimes. Uh, uh, I'm a woolly mammoth. I'm a woolly man myth. So I met, I made this uh, video for patrons. Um, it's called Outside because I felt like it was a, a good name for it, seeing as the stuff I was going to talk about was all related uh, or relating to the outdoors and being outside. So um, I put that on Patreon. You can go check it out there. If you want to sign up for as little, little, little as a fucking dollar, you can go check out the video. And I'm going to be doing more of those in the future. So it's a little, little plug for Patreon. But it's the only place you're going to get that kind of content as of yet. Um, and also, you know, I uh, did an episode with uh, my buddy Logan from Ping Pong Tactical. He was a, uh, if you didn't catch it, it was the last episode. Um, and it was labeled Bohemian Grove, which is, uh, you know, kind of kind of got a lot of people to watch the episode and listen to it, which is good. You know, I want more people to check it out. But I think one of the things is people thought that they were going to be going to be listening to the secrets of Bohemian Grove. Like it's going to fucking crack the whole fucking thing wide open. We're going to talk about cult members. We're going to talk about the 1%, the elite of the world. And, um, just so happens, Logan was a security guard, like back in the day with, uh, with, uh, Bohemian Grove. And one of the main points he brought up, which is, is pretty telling about like what actually happens there is his, his point is, um, you know, a lot of people have these conspiracy theories about like what happens on there happens in the Grove. And uh, basically, if you get any group of one percenters together, some shady shit's going to happen for sure. Um, hold on. Uh, shady shit is going to happen no matter what. If you get a group of the, the world's elite together. They're going to fucking discuss shady shit. They're going to, you know, they're going to make moves that change the course of humanity. It's just going to happen. And so, you know, you get these 
elites together and people automatically, it's going to create this fucking thing where people are like, there's no way they're just going to do dude shit. There's no way. But when it all boils down to it, his point was, why would they hire a bunch of fucking 18 year old kids to pull security for the fucking Bohemian Grove, which was like, you know, I was fucking with them most of the time. Plus I was pretty lit. Um, and that's a good point. I was like, yeah, that makes a fucking lot of sense. Like, why would they have nothing but young kids and 20 year olds pulling security for this fucking big elite thing? So, you know, there, I think, I feel like there was some people, not a lot, because uh, in the last, I think the past 10 episodes, I've had some really good reviews. A lot of people liked the episode. I think the only person that really didn't like it that, that made a stink about it was Logan himself, you know? Um, <clears throat> But it is what it is, you know. It is what it fucking is. Um, I've had a lot of uh, solid comments and compliments on uh, the past several 10-plus episodes that I've been doing. Um, and part of that is me just, you know, I've had a few where I've had, you know, call-ins because I don't really have people down in Arkansas with me that I would like to podcast with. Uh, so I had a few call-ins, some of myself just talking, you know, in this room. That's before you if you're on YouTube's and you're watching any of the clips here. Um, but it's just been it's just been me letting my brain uh, open up and just go. And it was it's kind of like therapeutic for me, like just to talk about whatever and anything, which you're gonna hear. Um, on this episode, you're going to hear some true stories and you're going to hear some fucking fake ones that I think will be funny. So just disclaimer, some of the shit you hear here, here, here is not true. So, um, I'll just put that as a disclaimer on this episode because I have, uh, I've got something that I think is silly and I think it's funny and I, uh, I want to talk about it like it's a true story. I'll try to make it sound like a true story, or I may check it out and just say that it's fake what I'm doing. It. Who knows? Um, but anyway, go check out the Bohemian Grove episode. It's pretty interesting to hear from someone who's there and makes a lot of points about like what's actually happening. He's not a shill for him or anything like that. He's not like trying to protect them. He's just uh, spitting facts. He's like, hey, it's a fucking boys club. Like no women's involved. No women involved. It's like for rich white dudes that want to go piss on trees and look at gay porn, which is a big part of what they do down there. He didn't really get into that. He told me about it before uh, when we were talking about it. And I found out he was a security guard there, told me all about it. He's like, yeah, there's like, I, I, he's like one of the the weirdest things that I saw down there was when they made us all clean up the fucking bunk houses they were at. And there was like nothing but gay porn in there. It's like, it's fucking weird. I mean, it to each their own. You want to do that? You want to, Jerk off to the fucking men's catalog, of the Sears men's catalog section. Go ahead. You know, I thought I thought, I thought I'd talk about a little bit of the news, but, you know, I'm a little bit behind. I had a, you know, this is something I didn't really bring up. I have a little Bill Cosby skit that I was going to do, and this is before, not Bill Cosby, but it's a combination of, ca of different ridiculous fucking characters. Um... Mainstream characters. One of them, it's like Bill Cosby mixed with Colonel Sanders, and he he has the chicken, and he is you know puts he's got eight herbs and spices instead of seven, whatever it is, and the the final herb and spice that you don't know is fentanyl, you know, or fucking rubies, whatever it is. But um, I'm a little bit late to the game with this because it was like I was telling uh, some of the dudes, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get a fucking Bill Cosby sweater off of Amazon. I'm going to get a Colonel Sanders, Sanders wig, and I'm just going to combine these fucking characters, you know. Maybe I'll put on blackface, and then it will really fucking set the mood, you know. This is a big no-no these days. You can't do that, apparently. Apparently, you can't do that. People will get upset about it. You know, I rightfully so, I guess. People are too fucking sensitive these days. <clears throat> too sensitive. You know, I'm sensitive sometimes too. I'm I'm a sensitive boy some days, but you know, people are too overly sensitive all of the time lately, and uh, part of me feels like they just want to be. 
um, because a lot of stuff people get re- outraged about is ridiculous. They're outraged about something that's outrageous. And then there's people that get outraged that those people are outraged at the outrageous. And I look at it and I go, it's all outrageous. And all of it is fucking outrageous. And I just want to be left alone. And I just want to make podcasts, enjoy my time here. Uh, I don't want to be too serious. I don't want to be outraged about much. You know, I mean, there's some things I was outraged about today, but only for a little bit when I like looked over and saw this specific shit and I was like, wow, that's fucking outrageous. You know, uh, but anyway, I was going to talk about, I was going to do this skit before Bill Cosby was released. Oddly enough, it was like the week before I was talking about it to the guys and then I was going to do it, the skit. And then, um, and then he was released and I was like, I got to do this now. And then it was a little bit too late, you know, but I could talk about Bill Cosby, uh, the release, but I think like there's a lot of podcasts where they just wait, wait for fucking uh a news event to fucking talk about whatever the fuck it is like oh there's something in the news let me talk about it let me give my reaction to it you know it's pretty popular people do reactions they they uh you know my son watches youtube videos where like uh people react to pranks and shit and it's like they don't actually take part in the pranks they just fucking go oh look oh my god he fooled him oh god and then they get millions of dollars and uh and it's you know, that's a, that's a common thing with podcasts these days is just to wait for something on the news and then fucking react to it. But I mean, I could do that. I could just follow suit with them. But I, I think I think people like me being a silly goose on this podcast. It's different. You know, this is the common thing I hear is that people are like, I like that you don't just do whatever the fucking trends are. You know, well, I don't. I just try. I try to keep it out. You know, I try to keep it as real as possible. It's literally whatever I want to talk about. Today, I just wrote down a bunch of stuff. I was like, I got, I'm going to put an episode out for this week so I don't have a break. I'm trying to be better about that. You know, in the past, I've had months of breaks. You know, when I came down here to Arkansas, I had a two-month break because I was moving and shit. And I'm sure some of you understand. Um, but I, I'm trying to be better now that I'm here and I, I'm getting my feet wet with just talking to you guys. I, You know, I started doing this uh, last year where I was just on here, just talking about whatever, you know, and, uh, people don't get it. Some people don't get it. And they're like, well, what's your podcast about? I was like, it's fucking about nothing. It's literally about nothing. You shouldn't watch it because you it might change your opinion of me. So, um, you know, I, I, back to, back to this whole Bill Cosby thing, you know, he's released. Everybody knows that no big deal. Uh, but oddly enough in the, the fucking same day that he was released, I was, uh, you know, visiting my local uh, gas station establishment. And this is a true story. This is not fucking fake. Um, you know, I was getting my uh, energy drink like you see here. Um, and and I went up to the cash register. And, you know, and usually they've got like trucker speed or, whatever, you know, like cases of like the Bumblebee energy pills and shit for truckers and stuff. Uh, I thought like I also think sometimes uh, like it'd be interesting to try each of those and see what fucking happens. If you have any, if you have any experience with taking trucker speed, like you're a trucker or you have taken trucker speed just to take it, comment and let me know what it's like. Is it just like energy? Is it something more? Is it, I'm, I'm sure there's some with ephedra. Like I see these ones that are like bumblebees, you know, that like they look like a like black black and yellow striped. They also have they also have like. Boner pills for like dudes that to fuck the lot lizards out there. The fucking truck stops for anybody that doesn't know what a, a lot lizard is. It's a fucking prostitute, a fucking pan pandy prosty that uh, it goes and fucks truckers at trucker stops. So they're called lot lizards found that out from a fucking uh, dude. I knew that it was a trucker. Uh, you know, he must have experience in that fucking Avenue, but yeah, they like, they got the cases of like, uh, you know, pot smoking paraphernalia, trucker speed, boner pills. It's like extreme rhino, and it's like fucking like triple X rhino, a fucking horny rhino that's just like oh, and some dude like looking like a fucking romance novel, just all fucking jacked up, all oily and shit. I wonder if like you take one of those boner pills and it like makes your skin all tough like a rhino, your dick hard like a rhino horn, and then you become a jack sweaty dude. It's like man, that trucker's hot. He's super hot. It's going to get all those fucking nasty bitches out in the fucking parking lot. Um, 
But next to all of that stuff, um, it was it, it was ready to go fucking jello shots, like alcoholic jello shots on the counter. I was like, that's fucking awesome. You could get the whole cocktail, get your trucker speed, get your boner pills, so you can fucking stay up all night, fuck all night, and party in the fucking back of your truck. Jello shots at the fucking gas station. Next to the fucking boner and trucker speed pills. Uh, coincidentally, on the day I saw this, coincidentally on the day that Bill Cosby was released, because the J E L L O makes you super horny and want to fuck all night long. Rudy, <laughs> Theo, have you guys ever seen uh, House of Cosby's? It was made by Justin Roiland one of the uh, creators of Rick and Morty, and he got sued, or he got a uh, cease and desist by Bill Cosby's fucking uh, lawyers, I think. But it's House of Cosby. It's like the precursor to Rick and Morty. Um, like, where, like, it's a bunch of Cosby. Like, this, the main character has the same hair as Rick. It's, like, all spiky and shit. And he goes to a Bill Cosby comedy show and, like, steals a hair. And then he creates a bunch of clones off of the Bill Cosby because he makes a fucking uh, a uh, a cloning machine. And then those clones start making clones of Cosby's, and then it just you know chaos ensues. It's fucking I'm hide and seek Cosby. <laughs> I'm poops my pee pants Cosby. Like it's uh, it's look it up. It's on YouTube. I'm sure out there they try to get rid of it. You know, and uh, House of Cosby is fucking dope. It's it's one of my favorite, like, lost kind of no one knows about fucking videos. Um, and it's made by the same people that make Rick and Morty. Oddly enough. It's dope. There's like 10 episodes, I think. And it gets ridiculous. There's like future Cosby and the, there's dinosaurs and shit. It's, I'm not making, I'm not hyping it up how it should be. Just go, go check out House of Cosby's. It's a House of Cosby's. You know, but what are the, what are they, what are the fucking, you take, you get the, I'm trying to imagine the fucking, uh, the lot lizards getting all juiced up on, uh, or jacked up on fucking, um, uh, trucks, you know, gas station, uh, jello shots. It's like, it's like getting, Ooh. excuse me. It's like getting gas station sushi, but it's fucking alcohol in jello form. What would they, what would they, what would they say when they're fucking on that? They talk all dirty in the back of the truck, like, oh, oh yeah. And they've got a gruff voice and some chinny, hair chin, some chinny chin chin. They're just in the, in the back of the truck getting plowed by fucking Billy Bob or fucking Bubba. And he's just like, oh yeah, I want you to lick my elbow. Oh yeah. So they talk all dirty and shit like, (laughs) oh, oh, Janice suck my butt cheek. (laughs) <laughs> she's down there not eating his asshole out, just like eating this trucker's asshole out. She's just sucking his fucking dirty, hairy butt. Like the che- the cheek, the butt cheek. <sighs> what could happen with... <laughs> What's the worst that could happen with fucking lot lizards and fucking Bubba in the back of a fucking semi-truck on trucker speed boner pills and fucking truck stop jello shots? I told you yet again, this is a, a worthwhile, worthwhile podcast. It's already off to a great start. You know, if you're watching on YouTube, you see my fucking wonderful lights. I'm going all out. I want to make a point about this blue light behind me. I like the color blue. You know, I can change it to other shit. Let me do that for you. I'll show you what it looks like when I change the colors here. I got a little appy app. I got an appy app. I'm going to fucking change it here and you can see this, what it looks like, you know, Uh, I could maybe change it to red or green if you prefer. Do you prefer that? I prefer blue, all right? I can dim it. I can brighten it. But um, I put out a thing on Instagram, like a poll, and said, like, hey, what color do you prefer? And this one individual, I remember because it was so outlandish, told me that blue is a gay color. And I shouldn't use it. He said red or nothing. It's like, what? How is blue K? So weird. I know it probably means it's retarded. Like, it's the gay retard. And it's it's retard gay, not cocksucker gray. Uh, cocksucker gay. But, you know, come on. 
Can we use? Can we? Uh, can we select our words a little bit better? Coming from me, someone who doesn't select very many words, um, and I select wrong ones at times. It's like, it really is. It, let's let's just let's fucking calm down a little bit, Fernando. Right? That's your name. That's your real name. That's all I could think. Your name is Fernando, and you think fucking <laughs> blue is gay, you know. And because of that, I'm gonna keep blue for a little bit. All right. And, and in fact, it, I I don't know. It's my podcast. I get to do what I want. And this is really why I pick it is because the the curtain here it's, it shows up a little bit better on there. That's really the only reason. I don't need lights back there, but I just choose to put lights back there, Fernando. How about you fucking go fucking take some truck stop jello shots? You know what I did uh, past few days? I picked up a dirt bike for my son. It's actually a pit bike, um, and he's been having a great time. He's he's down here with me. He's uh, he's enjoying his time, fun in the sun. You know, we're doing a lot of fun shit out there, um, but it's, it gets exhausting uh, because he, you know he's never he's never driven or ridden a, a dirt bike, and it's pretty fast. One I I made a mistake and got a pretty fast one for him instead of. You know, getting them like a 50 or something like that. Good starter bike would be a, you know, decently, but he's like, he's shredding. He's like ripping it up. He's just fucking, he's doing wheelies today and shit. But, um, I took, uh, he made a friend out here. I took them to the water park here and, um, there's a water park in the town. Uh, it's about 20 minutes from us. And, uh, it's as you'd expect the, uh, Arkansas's finest was out there. Um, I'm going to preface this, or I'm just going to say this. I love this state, as I've said before. I, I thoroughly enjoy it, but it's known to be one of the fattest states in the entire union. That's not a fucking, that's not a farce. You can look that up. It's known as one of the fattest states in the union, if not the fucking fattest state. You know, they have a lot of good barbecue down here, and they, the people seem to like it a lot, as I saw when I went to the, Went to the water park today. Um, I noticed how many fucking fat motherfuckers are out there. And um, it is what it is. It's, you know, what did I expect in Arkansas? You've never even heard of Arkansas, but you could imagine what it'd be like if you did. So, so uh, we're enjoying our time at this water park. I won't say where it was because in this fake true story... Uh, that I'm about to tell, or this true fake story I'm about to tell. Uh, one of these things is going to be true. One of these are not, and I just think it's silly and ridiculous. Uh, and you'll probably be able to tell that because this didn't really happen. And then after I tell it, you'll be like, you totally fucking happened. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, we're, we're doing the water park thing. There's the, it's, it's a fucking, it's a glorious time. Everyone's having mer it's merriment and enjoyment. Um, and, uh, you, we get our little bag and then we put it in the fucking locker. We get ready to fucking slip and slide, you know, and there's, it's not this big of a, a water park, but it is, it, it, it has a couple attractions or a few attractions. It's got the lazy river. They call it crocodile mile or some shit. Uh, which was not it was fake altogether because there was no crocodile on the sign. Uh, and there, and it also was not a mile. So don't fucking lie to me. Um, but, so, but I still enjoyed it. You know, we went there my, you know, I was chasing my son around and his friend and we were, we were having a great time, you know? Um, at, at one point we stopped to get, got dipping dots. <laughs> It is fucking delightful. I didn't partake in them, but I went and got the hot dog out of the fucking concession stand. This is where the, the fucking truck. This is where the plot. Th <laughs> this is where the plot thickens. All right. Um, and this is a this is an embarrassing story. I got to tell you, um, not just embarrassing for me, but everybody that was a, a fucking uh, associated with it. Um, you know, I, I'm eating the hot dog. It's a chili dog with cheese. Oh, it's fucking delicious. You know, uh, amusement park hot dog chili dog delightful and it's it's it was reasonably priced i got that for five dollars you know um i i pick up my hot dog my uh meat stick and i go yeah, enjoy it in the sh nice shade with my son and his friend and we're enjoying this they got the dip it dots i got the fucking hot dog with the chili on it mm -mm, hot day hot dog 
hot chili hot dog on a hot day. It was fucking fantastic. Um, and believe me, I was a sight to behold, being as I was the only one in okay shape in the entire park. You know, one or two of these moms might have been staring at my fucking bulge as I dropped chili on my fucking bare chest. Um, I had to take the finger and like go like this and then eat it that way. But anyway, uh, we finish up. We throw out our trash because we're fucking responsible. We're not slobs. We fucking believe that the environment is important, especially a concrete pad with water slides and chlorine. Uh, So we pick up our trash. We don't just throw it arbitrarily on the ground. You got to clean up after yourself, you know. Um, You know, don't don't give a hoot. Uh, Give a hoot and don't pollute. You know, if I could give it a throwback to fucking Moloch, the Owl God, he's still watching me after this episode. I'm pretty sure that the fucking, the corporate elite are watching this podcast now because they're like, he talked too much about what we do. He talked too much of us peeing on trees in the last episode. But I digress. Um, so, and we, we're getting back in it. We're slipping, we're sliding, we're riding, we're high-fiving. We're jumping and jiving, flying and gliding. Um, and, and so we go to this. And I'm going to get a little embarrassed here because I'm, I'm going to reveal something to all of you. You know, it affected more than just me and my son and, you know, his friend. It was my, most people that were in that certain slide. So remember, I ate that chili dog. Um. So my, my son and his friend, they're like, let's go on this fucking big one. It's the it's the slide that goes, it's like you slide a little bit and it shoots straight down almost. It gets fast and then you like fucking ping pong into the walls as you hit like the water at the bottom. Um, and as as we're climbing up, I think the, 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 the something in the chili dog, it just started, it didn't agree with my stomach. You know, you should not fucking partake in water activities. If you've just eaten a fucking chili cheese dog at a water park, you know, you know, aside from that, it's probably not safe. Probably all of them come with food poisoning equipped. But this was a fast, this was like fast acting to actin when it came to my fucking gut. So anyway, we're, we're getting up to the stairs and I don't know if the fucking exercise from walking up this massive flight of fucking metal stairs with like sand, cement sandpaper fucking uh, steps. It was just rough on the feet. Um, if it was working its way through my system quicker or my body was like, uh, you need to make room for all the diarrhea that's about to fucking come out of this fucking individual. Oh, foreshadowing. So anyway, um, we get to the line and, and I, I'm watching these fucking lifeguards and I don't even know if they're lifeguards. Could they save fucking anybody? There's like, there's like fucking 50 tons of fucking fat white people in three feet of water. You think they really need lifeguards? And if it came down to it, if these motherfuckers were sinking and drowning, would they be able to pull these fucking people up? They had about a they had about fucking twenty lifeguard quote unquote lifeguards. It's like they might need all of those people to take care of one with how big some of these people were. So we uh, we the kids get they they get up to the slide and they're just like you know choosing which one. They're like I want to go on the the purple. I want to go on the yellow. And they do the thing and they put the lifeguard dude puts a chain across, which is it just seems like it's added steps. He could just tell you to stop. Like, do they have a problem with people rushing and going, oh, what is this fucking, oh, and they jump into the fucking slide? Is that like a fucking thing? It might be. I don't know. I just don't know. Um, I don't know about this particular water park. Um, So they, you know, they, they, they've got it. Like these fucking 18 year old kid is like telling me to stop as the kids go down there. They have to wait for safety and shit. It's like, motherfucker, you don't have to put your fucking hand in my face and be like, Okay, cross your arms and cross your legs. It's like, I don't do any of that. I flail about in a tube and spash, smash into the fucking walls. You know, one of the little secrets secrets of uh, water slides, if you didn't know this, if you're, you're going down them I and you want to go faster, you could lube yourself up in, uh, in an 
epic amount of baby oil, or you could just arch your hips, go heels and shoulder blades, and you'll fly. You know, you'll fly into the future. So, all right, let me let me fucking reveal this dirty little thing that happened today. You know, I'm just gonna get into it. Um. So my stomach, my tummy is rumbling as I'm getting ready to get into the slide. And, um, and I was like, oh, I got to get to the bathroom, but I'm all the way up here. I can't fucking walk down the slide. I can't walk down the steps. I've got to fucking get down there and then I'll go immediately to the fucking bathroom. Anyway, dude's doing his thing. He's telling me and I'm like, just, he's like fucking, okay, cross your arms, put them on your shoulders, hold your sunglasses because something might happen and cross your legs and fucking tuck your sack and all this shit. I'm like, dude, just, I've got to fucking go to the bathroom. Shut the fuck up. And so I'm like, am I good? Am I good? He's like, hold on, puts his thumbs up. He's like looking at the other fucking, the dumb bitch down there. That's like fucking making sure everybody's like a fucking mile away when they land. So my stomach at this point, I'm like, I can't fucking take it. Uh, I can't fucking take it. I got to go. And so with all my might, when he gives me the thumbs up, I fucking rock it into this tube. And that might have been a mistake because as I'm going, my gut and my ass start convulsing in such a manner that would only indicate that I was about to shit my shorts, which, which is exactly what fucking happened. Um, as I'm rocketing down this fucking tube... I feel uh, more than just a tummy rumble. I feel shit explode out of my fucking asshole into the fucking tube. Now, I had to take a moment of silence there because of all of the people that experienced what happened when I fucking shot into the fucking thing. Uh, No, no one saw it. It was just a little bit of shit. Um, but it was diarrhea and it mixed with the chlorine and, and, and the fucking, uh, the merriment of the fucking white water rapids that were now brown water rapids as I shot out of that tube. Uh, and I hung my head and walked out of there as quickly as I could and did not tell a fucking soul that I just shit in the fucking water park. (laughs) Oh, Uh, you know. It is what it is. You know how much pee is in those fucking, those fucking pools? You know how much fucking, you know, they're, people are going to get on me now about shitting in the water slide. Hey, you probably peed in there. So shut the fuck up. All right. Don't fucking judge me just because I fucking took a, you know, I fucking took a Cleveland steamer in the fucking water park. Fuck you. You judgmental bitch. Anyway, moving on. I have to say again, that was fucking, it was truly embarrassing. It was truly embarrassing in this true made up story I just talked about. Uh, no, I just, I thought that as I was sitting there, I did it. I did have, you know, a tummy rumbling. I did have that fucking dude tell me shit. Um, I did uh, know that I had to take a shit. Um, and uh, I I could have shit in the fucking slide, but I did not. I just thought it would be funny. Um, and if you thought so, great. If you're like me where you think, if you if you could imagine someone having hot spray diarrhea in a fucking water slide and everybody's in the fucking, in the, like the fucking waiting section watching the people and like you shoot out of that tube and you've got so much diarrhea going down, you know, like when you watch the end of a water slide, you can tell when somebody's coming out and then they hit it and just fucking... A wave of diarrhea just splashes everybody in the fucking face. They're like, oh, fuck! And you're like, yeah! <laughs> I thought that'd be funny. I thought that'd be fucking hilarious. I'm sure it's happened before, you know? But anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what I did see, this is absolute, ab, absolutely true. What I did see is uh aside from the fucking disg- you know the fucking hippopotami that were in the fucking water park I did see a fucking super skinny uh granny that looked looked as if she had fucking kept off the weight since the holocaust and uh it, you know as she's walking there looking all like skeletal and shit enjoying her time in her fucking two piece uh you know sometimes I glance down at the crotchal region of whoever but <laughs> Guys and girls, I'm trying to see what you're packing. It doesn't matter how old or fucking how fat or fucking whatever. I look 
at you. I look at people, all right? And uh, what I noticed is it, it looked as if this granny had, uh, she had some extreme vaginal discharge. And uh, that discharge might have been from a ghost is how old she was. And, uh, you know, there was a snail trail on her fucking, her fucking bikini. And it was <laughs> disgusting. Not just, uh, not just uh, one snail trail. It was two. It was like her fucking, her old ass pussy lips were fucking dis- discharging to the side. It was fucking horrible. That's a true story. It was fucking gross. And there was a ton of people that were kind of like, you know, not, not old granny with fucking discharge. That's fucking horrible. It's like, you know, it's like it was made with like a fucking moth, moth fucking powder. (laughs) It was like gross. What's going on? It's like fucking all chalky and shit. Ugh. Is nobody going to tell this old lady, like, or any of her family, be like, hey, gr- fucking Margaret, what the fuck? Go <laughs> change. A little come off when I get in the water. <laughs> you know, another true thing that happened today is I got to fight, you know, believe it or not, this fine specimen you're looking at before you, you know, I don't really tan that well, as you can imagine. Sunburn. So, um,. Yeah, I had some sunblock on, but it was so direct heat. So, the the sun was so direct. It was like it was, uh, you know, it was like it was directed at me today. And no matter how much sunblock I put on, my fucking, my ivory white skin fucking absorbed all of it. And uh, I didn't think I got, uh, I didn't think I got fucking sunburned today. I was like, cool. Uh, nice. I fucking put on enough. Uh, SPF that I didn't get sunburned, but guess what? It didn't fucking matter. I came back, took a little nap, and was on fire. You know, this is what it is. I'm usually a tan golden god, but not today. Anyway, I feel like this is going to be a shorter episode just because I, I wanted to get on here, but we'll see what happens. We'll see how long this next section of topics that I want to want to discuss gonna uh I'm gonna explain some content that I made and the response that I had from it from some people that don't know how to take a joke apparently it's fucking bananas social media sometimes um is some of the interactions I get from people bug me uh, and I try to stay off of it as much as possible like there's a lot of people that dm and message the page and I try to respond to everybody just because you know it's good form it's good form to fucking respond to people that like the podcast but um, I feel like there's some people that uh, just don't understand humor or comedy or my sense of humor or what I'm trying to do. And let me explain. And I'll use a piece of content I just made a couple, a uh, few days ago. So if you've listened to the podcast for any amount of time, you hear uh, me talk about microwavable treats and delights when I'm drunk or, or I just, I like making, experimenting and making different kinds of shit with whatever is in the microwave. And that's exactly what happened, um, a few nights ago. Um, one of the things I like to make is microwave nachos. All right. I've talked about it on the past few episodes. Um, and, uh, and so I was making them the other night and I decided, Hey, why don't I do a little video on it and use TikTok and fucking cuz I I my TikTok is ridiculous. It's not serious. Like I don't do TikTok dance moves. Um most of it involves my dog. Like I put a video on there the other day and she just she lost her tooth teeth playing tug of war. It's fucking weird. But I made a video of that. Um I've got a llama dancing like Logan talked about. I uploaded that cuz it wasn't actually on that that profile. Um, and I just do silly shit because I like to have a fucking good time. I don't like to take life so serious. I'm not one of these TikTokers that fucking dance and they coordinate all these dance moves. Or I'm not one of these people that fucking like, like try to do what everybody else does on there. I'm just like, let me make a fucking video of me fucking making nachos. And in, and a lot of the stuff that I do is not scripted in any sort of way. So as I'm going through it. I start getting more aggressive about what I'm doing. I'm like, there's a point where I 
make the nachos and fucking take my hand and fucking grab and fucking shove nachos in my face. I take the bowl and throw it in the microwave and slam it shut. And actually, I was disappointed about some of it. I was trying to make this fucking funny thing where I'm getting more aggressive about the nachos as I go along. <laughs> like, started out, nachos look good. If you watch the video, you can see I was like, you know, shredding cheese and like doing this whole thing, putting sriracha on it, making them like, you know, diced chilies. Like it was this, this fucking good looking bowl of nachos. And then I fucking just start getting wild because I think it's funny. Like, <laughs> you know, it's not meant to be serious. It's not like I just all of a sudden had this fucking mental breakdown and getting depressed. Like some of you fucking thought you're like, Oh dude, is everything okay? Are you all right? Like, you know, um, I, I was just having a good fucking time or I was trying to by doing that. I laughed my ass off. I sent it to a bunch of my friends. They laughed their ass off. There was a lot of people commenting on the videos that understood what I was doing. I was being fucking silly. Some of you did not get that. Some of you were concerned about my fucking mental health and not that I'm a crazy person. You're just like, dude, is that all you have to eat? If you need money, I can fucking send you some fucking, I can fucking, uh, I can fucking wire you some cash to your local Walmart. If you need something more than something you eat in the microwave, like seriously, I'm concerned about your fucking, your mental welfare. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Uh, listen, I can afford a fucking filet mignon. You know, it's how I fucked up my hand. I bought a fucking $20 steak. A little tiny fucking one ounce steak because I like it. <laughs> I fucking fucked my hand up because I was cutting the steak and I dropped the knife. All right. I choose to eat like a piece of shit. Like some days I have a cabinet full of fucking ramen noodles because I like the taste of them. They're fucking delicious, especially the spicy ones. You know, it's a fucking guilty pleasure. I have, I have fucking, I have a taste for garbage food. And I'll just say this, it's probably from my childhood where we were super fucking poor, super fucking poor. And there were some times where I didn't eat. I remember back when I was a fucking kid, there was one week where we had fucking no money to get groceries. And I remember after three days, I got a fucking pack of big red gum and I chewed that shit because I was so fucking starving as a fucking eight year old kid. Like, <laughs> so part of that time is, uh, you know, they talk about being food insecure. There were times where I was very food insecure. I had a working mother. She was a single mom trying to fucking make shit work. She ended up pulling us out of that fucking, that bullshit. And we all did, you know, we all, myself and my siblings went our own ways, but we're all doing okay in some regards. So, um, you know, she did what she could, but we were fucking flat broke. And so because of that time, it influenced me as an adult where I will eat a fucking mayonnaise sandwich sometimes and I don't have to. It's just because I want to. All right. But I think it's fucking funny that I do that. You may not think it's funny. You may think I'm fucking serious all the time. You're like, bro, what? Seriously? What the fuck? Why are you fucking eating cat food? <laughs> It's because I like the taste and it's sterile. All right. Um, but anyway, because I talk about this on the podcast, because I fucking actually do what I say on the podcast, minus the part about shitting in the fucking water slide. Um, I, I decided to make a fucking funny video. I'm fucking, I'm sorry that some of you didn't get it. And I'm sorry if some of you are so easily tricked into thinking like, bro, like why? I don't understand why you're fucking throwing the nachos. Like, why is there a fucking banana in your nachos? Is that how you eat your nachos? <laughs> Fuck. I took a handful and like literally dropped all of it out of there. And yes, I eat bananas and nachos. <laughs> Got you again, motherfucker. I fucking, there's a part of the video where I fucking had a banana on the counter and I was like, uh, since uh, since I'm being aggressive, might as well fucking chuck a fucking banana in there as hard as possible to see it explode in the fucking bowl. And that's exactly what I did, bitch. So there was a banana in there. It makes it look ridiculous. It's fucking comedic, all right? 
Calm the fuck down. Like, I'm sorry that some of you don't get it. But please don't fucking DM me asking about my mental health. A lot of you out there need more fucking help than I do. This is the silly little life that I fucking live. Because guess what? I try to entertain myself. That's why I even do these episodes. I don't have to fucking do this. Do you think there's a point in all this? It's that I like fucking talking into a fucking camera. Which, by the way, I did this shit when I was a kid also. I used to record little silly songs into a fucking <laughs> a fucking tape recorder. You know? Play it for my friends. They thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. Some people probably didn't. Uh, and so this is why I make the podcast. I actually listen to my fucking episodes because I think the shit's funny. It's not that I have this ego where I'm like, I'm a phony motherfucker. I don't think I'm the funniest, dude. But I think some of the shit I say is ridiculous and funny to me. And I do it for me. <laughs> Just like those nachos the other day. I did that for me. I put it out there and I think it's funny that people are watching it. I think it's funny that people listen to this podcast. I think it's fun funny even that some of you think that I'm serious at any given second on this podcast. This podcast is a fucking comedy podcast. It's supposed to be funny. Don't, don't take the air out of the room like you fuckers did in my DMs. I fucking posted that video and I'd say the first fucking hour it was like like a bunch of DMs from people that were like, oh, this is fucking funny. Blah, blah. And then the fucking half of the people were just like, bro, are you okay? Like, just worry about you. It's like, I, first off, bro, I don't fucking know you. <laughs> and I'm glad that you're concerned for my fucking mental health. But goddamn, it's a fucking podcast. It's a fucking podcast. I know you confuse podcast. You see that it says podcast and you're like, well, I listen to the Jocko Willig podcast. Are you serious all the time? That's what podcasts are. It's like, yeah, cool. I also don't fucking wake up at 4 a.m. when I went to bed at fucking 6 p.m. the night before and go, look, I got up earlier than everybody. It's like, motherfucker, you still talk about how you need fucking eight or nine hours of sleep. So don't fucking give me that shit that you fucking got up earlier. Anyway, I'm not talking shit about him. I'm just saying like. All, all podcasts are different. There's some comedy ones. There's some fucking true crime ones. There's some fucking motivational ones. There's a fucking a cornucopia of podcasts you can select. And if you don't like humor and you don't understand fucking people being silly, you can go be you can listen to a serious educational one. You know, I like Lex Friedman. You think he's going to make nachos in the microwave? No. But I don't listen to his podcast for that reason. I listen to his podcast for the fucking smart shit the man says. So I can get some insight into what the man fucking thinks. And fucking his guests and everything else. You know? There's a reason I listen to the fucking Joe Rogan podcast for, for fucking different things. He's got a varying degree of fucking people. He does some comedy shit and he has some fucking educational stuff. Uh, psychedelic stuff. Fucking current affair shit. Like, it's a different podcast. So listen, if you listen to this podcast or you're just getting into it, this, this fucking podcast is meant to be silly. Don't, don't fucking take the air out of the room and fucking message me and be like, Hey bro. Like it's a joke. The whole fucking page is supposed to be ridiculous. Whether you think it's funny or not, it's supposed to be ridiculous. It's not serious ever, ever. I mean, sometimes we talk about serious stuff, but more often than not, especially if you see me by myself, this is, this is my, uh, dance with psychosis. All right. So just fucking chill out. Enjoy the ride because you made it. <laughs> you ruined the joke. I mean, you didn't ruin it. And I, I appreciate people like all jokes aside. I appreciate people fucking DMing me and, and asking questions, but just understand going forward i don't want to say this again this podcast is supposed to be fucking silly it should be called the silly goose hour or something and if that's another podcast go listen to the silly goose hour i'm sure it's fucking entertaining all right i feel like renaming this podcast to that the silly goose hour and then maybe some of you would get that it's a fucking ridiculous podcast it's supposed to be um and here's, here's the deal about why uh, this podcast is the way it is. I feel, especially like in the pand pandemic and the time we've had, like I feel like humor and not being so serious is important for some people. You know, to, to be ridiculous, talk about ridiculous concepts, um, 
just let your brain loose and just talk about whatever. Fucking no, this is bothering. Um, just uncork your fucking your ego and your your fucking uh, self conscious nature and uh, your embarrassment for things you might say, and just let your fucking mouth run. You know, as I'm doing this, I'm not really thinking much other than I have a, a series of of topics I want to fucking cover. But I do. It's like a bullet statement thing. It's a keynote speech, basically, is what I'm doing. A, a keynote speech of fucking crazy. Um, but I feel like for me, it's very therapeutic to fucking just talk about what the fuck ever that I think silly or ridiculous, and I don't take it too fucking seriously, because it's therapeutic to just let, like, let myself just go, let my brain go wild and and put whatever fucking concepts out there. Um. And I think some of you out there could maybe not do the, do the same shit as I do because we're all unique individuals, right? But to I think some of you might benefit from not being like maybe trying to not be so self-conscious in the way of just say whatever the fuck you feel, which is exactly what I do on this podcast. Sometimes I'm not even thinking about what I'm saying. I'm just saying it. Um, but I think the world could, could use that more is people just being ridiculous and trying to be silly and have a good time with their lives and not fucking, you don't always have to fucking be the serious fucking individual. You know what I mean? Like relax a little bit, enjoy your time here because we really don't get that long of a time here. So more humor, more people being silly, I feel would benefit humanity in general. I'm not saying I have all the answers. I in fact have no answers, but some of you could use, uh, just, just saying what you feel, just being ridiculous. Don't take life too seriously because you don't, it, it's so much, I feel so much funner to just be ridiculous, you know? You know, and I'll I'll summer I'll finish this out by saying this. And I will not talk about specifics because I don't want to give this person or this individual any fucking airtime when it comes to my podcast. Um, and it's not because I dislike whoever this is. Um, and I'm not even going to talk about what necessarily they were doing, but they're. I'll just speak in general generalities. <laughs> I'll just I'll just speak about this in general. There is so much bullshit and people that are not authentic on social media and they literally just do what they want what people that follow them want them to do or be and people will go to such extents where they start to essentially imply they were something that they weren't. And this isn't just in one community. This isn't like every fucking community there is under the sun, but um, people will create these fake lives. They'll pretend to be something they'll imply. And then it just kind of snowballs. They get follows, they get likes because they are these motivational quote unquote motivational speakers. They definitely didn't fucking copy and paste that off of Google. And they'll put out this, this vibe and this fucking persona that is not them. And they create this fucking false narrative about their life. And they, they gain a lot of followers and they become these fucking, uh, influencers over time and Insta famous. And then they're putting out their fucking motivational bullshit and it's all fucking bullshit. And, um, and people will follow them. And there's a lot of the times with the, a lot of the time with these people, there's indicators that they're full of shit. And what I'll say to, to just get, just not go off on a tangent about this whole thing, but it's like, no matter where you're at and whatever community you're a part of, eventually someone somewhere, if you're a phony in any regards whatsoever, and you're pretending to be something you're not, you will get called out. Maybe, 
maybe not all of the time. Maybe there's a few people that get away with it. Um, but in, and I'm talking about like specific things where there's no way that you could pretend to be something. It's you're eventually going to get called out. Plausible deniability is what these motherfuckers operate on. And they live these bullshit lives because I feel like there's too many people on social media that just want to be the cool guy or they want to pretend to be cool or they have all the answers for fucking life and they can, you know, instill this knowledge about how to fucking do it and wake up on Monday morning and fucking give the world he fucking heave ho or whatever the fuck but I think I think people can tell and they can sniff bullshit eventually when it's like these people will stumble stumble over their shit and give clues along the way because you can't pretend for fucking ever, you know. And it always blows me away because it's like eventually you're gonna run out of fucking answers. You're you're eventually gonna fucking say so many things that's gonna bite you in the ass. You're not going to be able to lie forever. And like, where does this lead? Like, what, what are you building up? You're, you're, you're building up a fucking brand based on yourself to sell stuff to people that are unaware and ignorant to the current, like what you actually were. And then eventually these people usually get fucking called out by people that are actually in the know. And then it's like this fucking massive outrage Oh my God. Oh my God. And then DMS and comments and people making fucking meme pages and just fucking taking all of this time and doing all this fucking shit to fucking slam this person that was fake to begin with. And you should have known this. I mean, some of these people are fucking misleading and they're fucking, they're smart in how they do it, but it's like, you know, but the other problem with this whole thing when people are fucking phonies and they're trying to mislead people to get money out of them because let's be honest that's what it's all about it's all about fucking money they don't want to help and you can think about like well this guy was giving good information he was giving good motivation I listened to his stuff it's like yeah but he was faking about his fucking credibility like he had no credibility but he was pretending that he was a part of something and I'm just saying he in general. I'm saying people, right? So then the problem lies in after the discovery of these fucking shitbags that pretend, the problem is the people that enable them in the comments and the, the fucking uh, propping these people up. It's like, you know, anybody can do what they want. They can lead whatever lives they want to lead. But at the end of the day, authenticity is king when it comes to fucking just being a, a fucking legit human being because of all those dollars that you may have earned by fucking making some copy paste off of Google motivational shit and fucking sharing it with the world. You're stealing because you're fucking phony. You're stealing. You're inauthentic. Um, and so if you, if you listen to this podcast, and you're a part of whatever community you're a part of, just be authentic. Like if I could give any advice to anybody and why I've been successful to whatever level that is, but you know, I have people tell me that like you're successful at whatever. And it's like, you know, I just, I kind of don't think about that at all. I just, I try to put out content that I think is funny or whatever. And if it hits great, if it doesn't, you know, a lot of my memes or whatever that I make, hit a lot of the time, but I'm not really, I'm, I'm doing, I'm providing this service to people that maybe need a little bit of humor in my style out there that maybe they're not seeing anywhere else. Um, and I think by not pretending to be something I'm not, I can in turn be as authentic as possible because the person you see here the person you listen to, I have all these different aspects of me. But if you were to meet me out, you'd be like, oh, that's the same dude we see on the podcast. And maybe I won't do crazy shit like make a, like walk into a department store and make microwavable nachos, you know. <laughs> that's reserved for my kitchen, fools, and podcasts. But 
I just try to be my own authentic silly goose self and I hope that people enjoy it. And during this time, like the pandemic that's been so shitty, you, it can make your day a little bit brighter, you know? And if it doesn't, I don't fucking care because this is all about me and I've fucking made it for myself. Anyway, no, that's, that's, I'm being serious. Uh, like, I hope if you enjoy this podcast, you, it's brightens your day a little bit because, you know, that's what I'm trying to do here. If I could provide any service to the, the public, uh, it's to brighten your day and have a little silly goose time. But anyway, thank you for listening for the past hour or plus whatever it is. And, um, if you believe in the power of the violent professional, if you believe in the seven, if you believe in the order of light protectors, uh, go to our website, pick up some merch, pick up this shirt. Uh, it helps, helps this podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, go check out our sponsors and, and buy some shit. We've got a bunch of discount codes and it helps this podcast grow. You know, if you, by supporting this, if you support this podcast, go support our sponsors because, you know, I I use that money to buy Coors Light. And if you like those silly goose times, you can fucking, you know, help me buy more Coors Light by buying some shit from my website and from from our sponsors. Um, And with that, kids, thank you for checking out this episode of the Violent Professional Podcast. I truly appreciate you. Uh, Leave a comment below if this podcast uh, brightens your day at all. And if it doesn't, leave a comment as well and say it sucks. (laughs) See you next time.